Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Andrew. How are you today? I'm fantastic, thank you. Yes, how are you? I'm also fantastic, yeah, Mm -hmm. because I've been looking forward to this interview a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm worried about your standard day now, if that's what you... (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, I, I love what you talk about. I love your philosophy, and I'm just interested how it all got started. So, yeah, I'm really, really fascinated to learn more and go a bit deeper than the TED talk. (laughs) (laughs) That was very much just a very high level bit of it. Yeah. 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 So I'll I'll start with my very, very open question and then I'm going to hand it over to you, which is tell us your story and how you got to where you are today, Andrew. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, we can go back as far as we want. And I think what Mm. we'll do is, uh, I mean, just as a general context, I I sort of, I had quite a traditional standard. I would say one could argue boring upbringing. (laughs) I don't mean that in a bad sense, but there was no dramas, you know, right. Uh, born in, uh, I'm white. I'm middle class. Uh, my parents got together. Were were, were absolutely fine together. They, we, 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 I was born born and raised in Sussex, and then moved to Bedfordshire. I did all the traditional routes of going to school, going to university, going to get work. All all the 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 real bog standard cookie cutter sort of thing. There's no dramas in my background or anything like that. And and I mention that because it it's it sort of I, I think it's quite important i think there's a lot of people talking their stories and it's all about the the, the difficult journeys they've been through and the hard yes. stuff and i often find when when i hear that i you know I'm, i i i respect them and i'm i'm impressed by those things but i go yeah but my life was quite boring what what <laughs> i've never had that <laughs> opportunity for those challenges anyway that, that's why i flag it up because yes there's more of us with normal lives than we think but obviously we've all got our you know journeys in there and that's that's what we want to point out so i want to yes. point out there's nothing special about my <laughs> background <laughs> if you know what i mean there's no hidden secrets and that kind of stuff and well, you know you know what they say though don't you there's i don't know what the data is but there's a really, really small chance for us to appear as human beings on the planet. You know, it's one in, I don't know how many. <laughs> um, so the fact that you are even on the planet, albeit a boring up, a kind of ordinary upbringing, you're still very special to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. And and it, exactly within that is the, is, is the whole sort of point of that pearl kind of thing, is that we think we need to have certain things to sort of validate us, but we are all valid. Yes. Uh, don't need to have the sort of dramatic background in order to justify sort of inspirational stuff or anything like that. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely uh, spot on with that. Um, so, yeah, so I um, I mean, I, just for the content, I, I, I followed my, my educational career just because i just did the next thing as to whatever i was good at uh, i was good at the sciencey sort of stuff at school particularly good at math so i went to do to, to math at university um i did do spent a year in france uh doing doing maths in french in france that was fun Whoa. <laughs> um for the record failed every exam i took whilst i was up, <laughs> just so we get that in there. <laughs> um, but my french was a lot better um yeah that was hard work uh but fun um and then came out of university and uh came out with a first class maths degree uh I was fluent in French came out and I sort of said here we go I've, I've, I've followed the path that everyone's told me I should follow uh I've, I've got the sort of as, as good as you can in terms of educational sort of stuff here I am world who wants me yes total silence and trouble because i came out in one of the recessions that were going on and nobody was employing oh it. wow and uh, oh you know if you if you if you'd come uh graduated 10 years ago you could just pick a job whatever you want now uh degree's not good enough no. uh so yeah anyway so i i, I kind of I never had a direction never as i say no clear direction i was going and it was just follow the next step follow the next step and doing uh, uh just the work jobs to get things through and then 
eventually uh, ended up being uh, asked through an agency if I'd like to go to an interview um, with KPMG. Right. In their insolvency department. Okay. So I went, okay, give me two secs. So I quickly uh, went to the reference book to look up who KPMG was and what an insolvency was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of rough. With Pete Marwick as they were in those days. This is dating me for those that know the earring. Oh, but, but yeah. Have no idea. KPMG are an accountancy firm. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about insolvencies when I get into it. Um, point being, I, 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 it's not something I've focused on, nothing I was aware of. But, uh, you know, I had a math background. So I was numbersy, it was accountancy. An agency put all that together and said, there you go. That's uh, that, that, that's, Let's put you forward and see what happens. Um, had an interesting experience going to the interview. It was in Milton Keynes. If you know Milton Keynes. Um, I do. Roundabouts and oh yeah, excellent, fantastic. I uh, all... loved Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against it, but it's all roundabouts. It's all the similar yes. buildings. I got lost trying to find the office. Yes, <laughs> I had the address. <laughs> I'm running up and down Silbury Boulevard trying to find this place. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> getting <laughs> sweaty and and running around in a suit, going, "Oh my god, I'm late for my interview," which is always that's the golden rule. Never, never miss it in the interview. Uh, I ended up being like 10, 15 minutes late. Uh, by pure chance, I went in the wrong entrance. There was a side entrance that I'd gone in, which actually right. took me straight to the department. Wow. And the secretary has sort of helped me, oh, no, you should be downstairs. Or whatever. Bottom line was, by the time I sort of got into the room for the interview, they were apologising to me for not giving decent instructions on how to enter the building and stuff so i turned up late and they were apologizing to me <laughs> that is a brilliant place to be <laughs> uh there's a small even though kmj is a big firm it was a, a small office so there was only a six or seven people uh i was interviewed uh it looked like it almost felt like it was the uh, first time they'd seen my cv clearly they'd seen i had qualifications that was good enough for them i was essentially handed the job there and then I had a second interview uh, the second interview was basically down the pub and the hardest right. question yeah, had to answer was what do you want to drink <laughs> yeah. um which essentially is a social bonding do you get on with the team kind of thing so it sort of yes. worked um yeah. so so i said yes so i so i got in got uh got um got involved in to insolvency wow um and stayed there for 17 years gosh <laughs> the same firm uh, and so just for those that don't, we've heard the terms, we see about it on the news when Debenhams goes bust and all these sort of things, uh, essentially a, a, um, when banks lend money to a company, or this is, there's a number of different factors, but this is the, the main thing we worked on. Uh, they kind of have a mortgage over the property, like you have a mortgage over your house, you have a mortgage over the property. Yeah. Uh, if the company gets to a point where they're in difficulty, the bank has the power to investigate what's going on and and look at them closely if it gets really bad they can appoint somebody uh, as a receiver or an administrator uh, and they would appoint a firm of accountants to go in and take control of that business yes actually run it so the directors lose their powers and right. we would go, i would essentially go in and become the managing director finance director whatever you want to call it you, you are right. in charge right and not in a sitting in a boardroom making strategic decisions and hoping it happens right in the middle of it, right on the site, dealing with everything, negotiating with customers, negotiating with suppliers, nego talk, trying to keep the team on board uh, and the employees. Uh, you, you work with the directors because they've got the knowledge unless they're crooks. Um, so, yeah, um, very much cut and thrust, instant decision making, very commercial. You're running a business just straight in it. Uh, so for 17 years, that was kind of my job, <laughs> running wow. businesses. Yeah. Um, and we'll get to it, but ultimately I'm in the coaching space now, as, as uh, hopefully people may be aware of. Uh, and actually a good grounding, because my job was not to know everything, but to work with the team that, that was there and, and challenge and get the best out of them and try and do something different and better than we were doing before. Yes. Uh, and um, and making quick decisions on the fly and, and all the rest of it. So a lot of business experience built, work on every kind of business you can think of. Um, first ever job was trading a bingo hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later on, um, building oil rigs, uh, fashion designer, a timber yard, um, uh, shopping centers. 
you name it. Wow. And bog standard nut, nuts and bolts manufacturers and printers and all, all, all sorts, just about any business you can imagine. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, a lot of experience. Um, you saw the inside of lots of different businesses, mm. basically, totally, um, and had to be involved in running them effectively. And you got to know every single aspect. You were doing sales, you were doing HR, you were doing legal stuff, you were doing, uh, you know, every single aspect under your um, watch. And um, and depending on the job, so you know, KPMG is one of the big global firms, so there's some huge jobs that they got, and then yes. sometimes you'd get pulled into a one of them, and you're like kind of a, a small cog in a in a big wheel, and just doing a very specific thing. But in Milton Keynes, where I was, they they they're a smaller office, they're doing smaller jobs, and you're dealing with the whole thing. Um, it could be from tiny one man bands up. Uh, so again, getting the full breadth breadth of scale of business as well, from tiny to huge. Yes. And um, so, yeah, really, really useful. I mean, I'll, I'll get to the point later on, but just want to flag up. Never had any issue with uh, the job I did. Never had any issue with the firm. Um, I'm very grateful for the time I had there. Uh, it's so it's challenging and uh, the, the, you have to kind of build up a certain tolerance, a, th a thick skin, um, some walls, whatever you want to call it because you're dealing with people's lives, you're dealing with people being, make, making people redundant, uh, people not uh, getting the money that they're owed and all that kind of stuff. And it, you, you kind of have to build a resilience to that, not yes. to be not to be callous, but not to take it personally. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's, a, it's, mm. it's so there, there can be a lot of, um, what would the, what would the, what's the other, uh, gallows humour type sort of stuff. So like in the military where it's all dark, so you, you laugh to it. So there's, there's a lot of hu dark humour that goes on in order to, to counteract the the dark side, so to speak. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, but again, but also, as... also people know what you're there for, right? Well, hopefully. So if you, if you, <laughs> well, the thing is, it, it's kind of, you're the hatchet man, aren't you? You kind of walk through the door with a reputation ahead of you to say, here they come. They're coming to do something with us. We don't know either to help us survive and get other investors in or shut us down, mm. and, you know, sell off the assets. And this is it. And, it, and it's, uh, so there's a lot of fear going on within the company from the owners and the employees, uncertainty. And yes. you know, we've we've never caused it. We've had nothing to do with causing it, but we're the face of we're the messenger. Yes. <laughs> uh, so on one hand, physical threats, um, abuse, uh, all these sort of things have happened. Uh, yeah. On on the other side, we've had um, Christmas cards from people saying thank you very much. We even had the situation where so you make somebody redundant and actually say thank you so much for everything you've done. Really appreciate it. No, it's not your fault. So you, you get the full spectrum. Uh, wow. And if you if you're working with people properly and communicating with them properly and and everyone can see you're on the same page with the same agenda, they literally, as you said earlier on, they appreciate it and they realize once you work with them enough, they know you're not there to be the bad guy. You're there to try and get a result. Mm. So mm. that communication is very important. Uh, but there's some people you can't do anything about, and you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've had we have had arson attacks and um, uh, threatened to be hit several times, and <laughs> all these sort of things as well. Um, so now, now I understand why you're saying you have to have a thick skin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, the, the, it's it's number of people that came in thinking they've got a, a very exciting career at KPMG, and they last about a month. They go on their first yeah. job and they've, they've gone in tears and they, they, they can't. It's not for everybody. <laughs> no, no. Um, it, it can be quite brutal and pressure yeah. and uh, and so on. Um, but exciting and educational. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. As I say, it improves your, 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 your thinking skills and um, problem solving. Uh, not bad for a mathematician. You see the links. Um, mm hmm and and a yeah, huge amount of business experience. I say you're working with 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 uh, with every aspect of a business. So uh, so that just sets the context. And uh, there came a point I'd done. Um, I moved around a little bit. I say started in Milton Keynes, and we sort of ended up in St Albans. I'd done some comments in London. There was a point where I went went to Australia, and I was working in Australia for a couple of years. Uh, came back to to Leeds, which is where I'm now. So the last sort of ten years of my career was in the Leeds office. Uh, worked in uh, Barclays Bank for a bit. So e all within KPMG, but chipping and chopping and changing a little bit. Right. <clears throat> and 
there came a point where I got promoted to senior manager. Yeah. A, a a good level. I think when I started, it was senior manager, and then directly above that was partner. So it was <laughs> director. Then came in, but anyway, it's quite pretty, quite high up. And uh, they 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 took us on this um, to celebrate the congratulations of coming senior manager. They'd have these events to sort of team building events and uh, having coaches coming in and helping us and that sort of stuff and, and thinking about various things. Um, didn't know what coaching was at that time, by the way. Um, no. But um, we had this coach coming, running various things and thinking about stuff. And one of the exercises we did was, um, okay, so we're going to do a values exercise. I want you to think about what's important to you in your life. Um, things. This is stuff that be quite might be quite common with people, but write down on a bit of paper everything that is important to you. Boom, 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 boom. Yes. Now consider the values of the firm, not the ones that they've just stuck on a laminated card and stuck on the on the wall on your site every morning with your salute and the song and all the rest of it but what you actually perceive as the genuine values as they are played out in uh in, in daytime so you write those down and now that's and the objective was to compare the two and see what we can do to get them closer together i write mine mine down i write the firms all down i look at them and think hmm you thought there'd be at least one the same <laughs> And and it was just literally in that moment where everything came crashing together. Went, oh yeah, I don't enjoy being here. Wow. And it was just I was just in a dazed moment for the rest of the day, kind of thinking, I I I don't want to be here. Oh yeah, all that chopping and changing that I was doing and going to Australia for a couple of years and then working here and secondment there and that kind of stuff. That was actually me trying to get out, but rather than escape properly i just use it as, I, I never actually got out properly i just sort of moved around moved the seats on the titanic <laughs> yes <laughs> um and again nothing to do with the firm nothing to do with the job it was just i was in the wrong space i just followed the path through routine from education through job just whatever crumbs up next um i don't want to be arrogant but I, as i say i'm reasonably intelligent i can reasonably adaptable so kind of whatever i'd fallen into i would have done okay and you yes find your space and you do well in your space and you just put up with it and <laughs> so on right. and so forth uh and then it was just that moment of yeah i don't want to be here anymore <laughs> incredible um, did you share that with anybody who was running the values session or did oh you no keep no, it no. quiet it was no. totally internal i told my wife when i got back yeah and um and I th she was very supportive and positive. It was, it was like, finally. That sort of reaction. Um, yeah. And um, But no, I wasn't going to tell anyone. Um, I was not that sort of person that sort of, it's a flip side of the what may be really good in the insolvency world of building the wall and not letting stuff in meant nothing much went the other way. Right. Uh, I will share what I want to share and not more than I no more than I need to. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I wasn't that uh, open with it. Uh, however, as things moved on, I started getting better at that. And uh, around, so when I had this realisation, just to give a time scale, it took me four years from that point to actually leave. Wow. <laughs> because I knew where I didn't want to be. Yeah. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Absolutely, yeah. I had the away motivation. I didn't have the towards motivation. Um, mm -hmm. And it was about within days, I think, of that happening, I got contacted by the um, senior manager or the partner in our director in our firm sort of thing. And he says, oh, we've got this new role opening up within KPMG. And KPMG was moving towards something which is now just such the norm. When you think back to then, it seems like, how could that be alien? But it was. KPMG yes. was the first of the large firm to actually think, oh, our, our staff are important. We need to look after them. <laughs> what a crazy concept. And they started actually sort of uh, treating the team members as, uh, as you would a client in terms of extra service. And then we look after you and then you look after us because they're they, yes spotted all the people get the people would get trained and disappear get trained and disappear the turnover rates are ridiculous they, we need to do something about it um and and now yeah back then it was a strange concept now everybody's doing it but kpg was one of the first of the big accountants so they became you know 70 times firm to work for and all this because of all the right. people one of the things that they had was a um in each department there would be someone who would be like responsible for the well-being of the team 
Right. Um, called P- uh, people management leader, they called it. So I had my day job doing the thing, but if anybody had any issue whatsoever, then I'd be the focal point for that discussion. Right. I mean, I did, I was involved in the pay rises and the bonuses and the appraisals and all those sort of things. But also I would be that person that um, you're walking across the office. Someone comes up, oh, excuse me, can I, um, <clears throat> can I have a, uh, a quick chat in the room? And you'd, you'd go off into the room and it's like, well, what, what is it? Oh, I've just broken up with my other half. I'm pregnant, uh, about to get divorced. Um, I'm not getting on with so-and-so over there. Um, can you have a word with thing in me, Bob? Because they smell. These are all genuine things. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to with all the people issues. Uh, and most of the other people that I was uh, working with um, said, my God, you, you, you that's horrible. <laughs> how can you, how can you get through the day? I said, no, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt a real liberation in actually working with somebody on a, on a one-to-one. The, the business yes. was good. You can rescue businesses and feel really good about saving the jobs. But as soon as you got to the point of success of setting that business on and keeping everything intact, you were out, had nothing else to do with it, mm-hmm. and, and saw no more of it. Here you were working with people, seeing them develop, seeing them improve, seeing them seeing real changing happen in real time. Mm. Uh, and that coziness is that the word or that intimacy of a one-to-one sort of relationship you could build with someone i just found much more powerful than than the business thing and it was like uh can i can i do this <laughs> can, I, can, I stop <laughs> that? can i do more of this please um and so so that sort of started me exploring that kind of thing and and, and i this is where a conversation would open up with other people doing similar roles in other departments and therefore they they weren't part of the it's harder to open up to somebody close to you than it is to a stranger it's yes. easier to, to to talk to a stranger if you know what i mean they understand yeah. yes um so that's where i started sort of opening up a little bit more and exploring things and um and um I start, then this word coaching started flying around and i said oh what's that and right um they ended through various connections i ended up speaking to somebody in london who was he- who was part of the coaching team they got me an interview with uh, the head of coaching in the whole of the firm and uh he said right excellent well um i'm looking for some support uh let's see if we can get you a comment into my team what we're doing at that, at that point we just merged with the german practice and they wanted to roll this people stuff into germany and so he'd been instrumental in setting it up um him and his team knew all the theoretical stuff i was someone who had done the job so i was going to go yes. and advisor to germany um working alongside him in introducing it to germany yeah. That would be the pretext for the to comment, but in reality, I would be his protege. <laughs> yes, and, and and end up working with him within the coaching department within KPMG, which is what I wanted to do. Wow! And this opened up. I discussed it with the the, the home uh, home office, <laughs> got approval, and and started working within the HR function underneath the head of coaching. Uh, with a whole nine month plan to to end up shifting across to the the internal coaching thing, and it's like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, work comes, work goes away, and all those sort of things. There are other pressures, there are other challenges for sure. Nothing's easy, but yeah. those yeah. I was out of that thing that I ne- you know it's taken a couple of years. I knew that it was uh, stuff going on, but it, you know, like a weight off your shoulders and all the rest of it. And it, it just felt so good. And I was going traveling to Germany and working with people there and w- running workshops. And it was just totally different way of doing things and or different arena. And then, um, you know, we'd go to, we'd have meetings set up. And then the, uh, this um, John was the name of the, the guy that was my mentor, so, so to speak, head of coaching. And then, um, yeah, it, there would be it, it cancel meetings, and he would we wouldn't turn up, or someone would come in instead, or whatever it might be. And um, I'd be going out and doing stuff by myself without him, and it was all so like well, I'm not really something's going on here. Yes, <laughs> I'm literally working with him. I'm barely seeing him. Mm. Okay, he's in London. I'm in Leeds, but you know that's you know that's that wasn't the thing. And then there came this point. I got a text through from him, and uh, he said, um, "Just to let you know, I've been diagnosed with cancer." Oh, and I think about six weeks, two months after that message, mm. he, was gone. he was gone. He'd had it before. This was a relapse, right? Uh, he kind of guessed it, I think, when he sent the message. But he was very one of those people. He he took it in his stride. He, he was very positive about it, but he kind of knew where mm. it was. 
Mm. Uh, and and he'd been such an instrumental person in the firm he changed so many lives i went to the i went to the funeral and the church was packed and there was just speech after speech after speech or and listening to people in the crowd everything i wouldn't be where i am today Mm -hmm. uh, had it not been for him and and you just like (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'll be careful I phrase this, but it's 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 the, the inspiration it was it was sad the inspiration was there as well. So mm. it was in whilst you're there surrounded by all these people, you say, well, hang on a sec. This is sort of what I want to do, and that's who I want to be. It was inspiring that he could make this difference to people. And yes. that felt much more exciting than doing the insolvency stuff, you know. Yes. This yes. is what you can do with coaching. You can have make that much of a transformation in people's lives. Yeah. Um, so that was very um it, yeah it just solidified go yeah i'm 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 going in the right direction even more determined to make it happen now you're uh, on the right track yeah for sure kind of confirmation wasn't it and a great motivator as well um yes so obviously the the, the there was chaos whilst he wasn't there because he he'd heading anything up um the project that we'd work in was rolling on and there came a point where the person that had picked up this german project said to me um Oh well, uh, well thanks for all your help. We'll uh, we'll miss you. Sorry, what? What? Pardon? Hey, eh? mm-hmm. because of course I'd agreed with John what the plan was, and this comment was just going to be a cover for me to then move into the. But John was no longer here anymore. No one else knew about the deal, and there was no one to be my mentor anymore. And all of the thing we'd planned had hadn't just hadn't clocked it. The whole thing had disappeared. Wow. And. I managed to extend it for a couple of months, but basically um, to take it to a full year, but then boom, straight back to insolvency. <gasps> no! <laughs> having got out, having got in place the oh! way I want to draw, flung straight back. But how I- can that be if the company was so committed to that coaching and... Because I was on secondment into the department yeah and it hadn't been officially documented that the whole point was for me to move on that was a deal between me and right. john no, longer right. here. no one was there to continue the deal because it was just a gentleman's agreement between Actually, the two yeah here. yeah darn it <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm almost visualizing the moment <laughs> that it's happened <laughs> oh it's like a sinking feeling what did your wife say <laughs> I you can't swear. I've, I've kind of blanked it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember specifically. Yeah. Um but it wasn't it wasn't a great time. No. Uh, and I mean I I I what what did happen was was well I I now know what I want to pursue and I had coaching things were still cropping up and I was now connected with people so I, I was doing my day job but I was exploring other options looking to get a a role within the coaching so if a job came up you could apply for it mm-hmm. and I went to very courses and I started speaking to people and I went to an interview for a coaching role in a different department and I got through the first interview got through the second interview and the person that had I can't remember the order anyway the person that run the interview emailed her boss to uh, uh, but by accident sent it to me she got, obviously got confused you know when you send the email to someone you send it to the wrong person <laughs> it, the email she sent to her boss had gone to me and it essentially said we've got we've got one here you know look out for this person this, this is this is the person we want so i yes. basically had a really wonka golden ticket in my hand saying i've just had an interview and she just said this is exactly what there'd been some issues because i hadn't actually had any formal training but a big we're a big believer in you you train for attitude and you can uh, hire for attitude you can train the skills in yes um so they saw that i was the right sort of space i just needed to do it sort of thing um and so that was so the, so that final door was open <laughs> it was a chance to get back out um and then the merger went fully through with germany germany were in charge of the budgets um they had decided that because there still hadn't been a replacement for John, that we weren't going to hire any more people in the coaching practice uh, and all recruitment stopped. Oh. So having been told that essentially you've got the job, we've got a couple more people to see, but basically it's yours. Um, next call was, we're not that no. hard. And final door just went clang, 
shut. It's a conspiracy <laughs> going on, <laughs> Andrew. Um, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so I did manage to get myself. I started. Well, I need to. I need to. One of the good things they said that you don't have any formal training, so I got myself onto a coaching training program with Coaching Academy. I got the firm to pay for it because I said I'm still a leader of team. I'm, you know, I'm leading up the team now in my department. Mm. Um, and um, so coaching skills is going to be really useful. So I managed to to convince the firm to to put me on a coaching program. So I am yes. now training as a coach in the background whilst at work. Um, but this is the point where I allude to in the TED talk, if you remember, and I'm saying I'm I'm going to work and and feeling physically sick, and even though yes. I'm motivating people when I'm going there, because I knew I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And you turn up and do your job, <laughs> um, but it's hard you know you, you you're you not in the right place you're not doing the right thing and no. and mentally i'd left but mm. i was still there and it was that was which that tension which caused the problem and at that point there was no way out that i could see uh so um in the training course i finally uh, there was a point where I'm, i remember being at one of the uh way day things uh, you know a weekend uh on-site sessions um and I'm there was somebody else going through the training program and she said right I've decided I'm leaving work and I'm going to set my own coaching practice and everyone around her just sort of jaw hit the hit the floor why she just found out she was pregnant right uh didn't ha had a, a solid solid job just um, gone pregnant and now she's deciding to leave without any clients or anything like that just going to leave and set up my own practice and Amazing. everyone wow impressive and then driving back because I think it was in sort of Derby way, the, the, the first a couple of hours driving back, I just thought, hang on a sec. She can do that. Yeah. Why am I still here? Yeah. <laughs> why, why am I still, you know, I've been paid well, let's face facts. I've done all right. Um, we've got money. Um, if I was to walk away today, I don't need to earn anything. We've got savings and stuff like that. What, yes. The only thing stopping me is me. Yes. Um, and so another one of those inspirational moments. And that's when I, yeah, definitely got home and said, that's it. I've decided I'm leaving. And that's, yeah, finally about time. <laughs> so we, um, I, I've lost track of time, by the way. We, 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 we'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, no problem. <laughs> we, um, so I waited, waited till the end of the year. So I got my bonus paid. <laughs> Why, <laughs> you know. uh, first day back after in January, uh, handed my notice in. Total shock uh, amongst everybody, not expecting because I'm I was like the stalwart. I'd been there for so long. I was I was the person with KPMG written through me and all the rest of it. Yes. Um, oh, the oh, the other irony <laughs> um, in the my appraisal for that year when I was really hating life and all the rest of it, I'd got my best ever mark. Whoa, <laughs> best ever review. Uh, and again, I think they were appreciating what I was doing for people because I was still turning up for people. And and again, another skill. It's like if, if I'm if I've got someone in front of me that needs help what i'm going through is irrelevant again bring that shield up make use of it forget what's going on in my life help the person in front of you and deal with your own issues later on so again another skill which had come from the past which um is still relevant as a client today you know as a, as a coach today so yeah I, just just to interject so you can take a drink um i guess that i i think my my wife talked about this recently because she's a coach and and she said there's a skill you need to be able to, you know, compartmentalize your stuff completely and be there totally present for your client, for or for the person that you're helping. Quite. You know, whether it be listening, being able to do all the human things for them rather than have your own stuff filter into it somehow. Which yeah it must be tough to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, so again, extreme training ground, <laughs> but useful. Um, yes. And uh, there was a little bit of toing and froing. Um, I they counter off. I, I'd planned my notes in the counter off, and, the, and uh, uh, I got. I actually stayed for a bit longer to do a training role, working with someone I really respected, create some training, but. Um, uh again didn't actually end up going where i they did offer me a 50 50 role i'd work for kpmg half the time doing training and then set my own business half the time which would be like perfect and of course that never happened no. uh so eventually canned it fully turned it in and 
I've, I've been speaking to a few other people on the way and my initial reaction when I've been thinking is, is, is leave. I just wanted to get as far away from insolvency as possible because it's the natural reaction to run, 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 run. And, um, and as a note, you know, the decisions I'd made, I, I lost friends as a consequence of making it. And people that I'd worked with thought, what the hell are you doing? Uh, some people still haven't spoken to me since. <laughs> yes. You know, there was a sense of betrayal from various people. You've worked all this year and you're throwing it away and tend to be people above, but others as well. Other people that have been relying on me. in the... So it wasn't an easy decision to leave by any means. Because no. it, um, it was that people stuff that I, that I was all about. Um so anyway, but um, what do I do? Um, and they always talk about niching and um, speak to a few other people, realize that actually, instead of going away from insolvency, why don't we try and combine the two things? So when I first started out, I created a concept of the turnaround coach. I thought that was the best phrase. But my main thing was working with business owners going through all this financial trauma from financial difficulty through to actually losing their business but help making them deal with the emotional side of it. Yes. Um, because obviously I've done all the business side and I knew how they work. So I could be the interpreter from them in terms of how the process was going to work, but yeah. also work with them on a more human level um, and help them deal with the confidence issues, the fear, the um, all the stuff that crops up when you get to such a traumatic event as losing everything you've <laughs> built sort of thing. Yes. Uh so that was that was the intention, um, and the there were challenges involved with it. Essentially, I mean, we're talking two thousand eleven now, and whilst mm -hmm. coaching was about, it was nowhere near as prevalent as it is now. And in something like insolvency, it was it was just like what a eh? what are you doing a eh? helping people don't get it. So even just in the industry, it was a weird concept. Obviously, the the director themselves is not in a great position to make a decision. So. There were challenges uh, to help illustrate my point. That's where my first book came from. So I, uh, I interviewed people that had been through an insolvency, what they went through, what they'd learned, brought my own experiences in as well. Um, so I got a, effectively a self-help book um, for people going through financial difficulty through insolvency, uh, help yes. them get back up um, on, on, uh, on, on the horse again, so to speak. Um, and that led to a certain... Uh, certain things with um, I got talking to government as a result of it and I had a, a plan developed on how to create a support network for business owners going through insolvency to get them back up so instead of them walling around in depression and and taking benefits get them back up and hiring and earning money and con contributing to the state um, again got asked to be a policy advisor but never went anywhere <laughs> all these things all these doors opening and shutting opening and shutting opening and shutting and um, eventually uh because what i thought was a nice little niche that could just like work nice work ended up being this thing could have potentially been this huge thing uh opened my mind to a much bigger direction i could go in and realized that actually it wasn't the right time it's not working so i kind of had to park that entire thing and went in a different direction right. i knew it was a good idea i knew it made sense but it wasn't the right time and I was the clients I were getting were just normal people in nor in normal states of business, not not in difficulty and because um, they had more money, <laughs> but helping yes. with other stuff. Um, so I was shifted towards sort of more traditional uh, or targeting to normal businesses rather than struggling businesses. I collaborate with another coach, and um, and, and again, it's working with someone busy. I've, I, any business issues. As we, as you know, I've got the business experience, so that's fine. But now I've, I've got more in terms of the personal um, stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, and really help them to sort of make the shift internally, so they can then put the strategies in place rather than trying a strategy that doesn't work. Because actually, it's them that's stopping it. Through all of this, I'm finding my own problems. Yes. My own challenges, and it turns out that I hadn't really fully realized it. I was actually quite more introverted than I thought. Uh, I had a lot more sort of uh, fears of going on in me than I expected. And of course, now I, I, I need to stand up and shout and be center of attention and all these sort of things, which I wasn't used to. Um, the, the, the best example for the challenge I have was um, as an example was um, I couldn't phone anyone. Right. Who wasn't expecting my call. Right. So, even if we and we did this test, even if it was to a friend, I couldn't pick the phone up and call a friend if they weren't expecting my call. Right. 
Now, this doesn't help if you're trying to get business and win the days of cold calling and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or even sort of, I, I was thinking, there's all these businesses just going to business and talk, and I would feel physically sick trying to walk into a <laughs> into a store just to talk to somebody. And yeah, um, yeah. so I, I and I re- ultimately got to the realizing it was it was disrupt interrupting people was the issue. Um, uh, which and behind that's like a fear of rejection and and and, and I could pick up events that happened in my path that would have passed that would have contributed to it. Um, but ultimately it was a, an internal so I went for hypnotherapy, I had coaching, I had all sorts of things trying to resolve this and um it's the inner child work and all these sort of things which is again great because it gave me more tools to try other people work yes so, that's good i'll learn that um and keep working and working working on my own stuff and the it got better it improved um but still wasn't there and <sighs> moving forward a few years we're getting close to, to the now don't worry <laughs> you i'm not worried at all <laughs> um <laughs> So let's just move forward a little bit. So the, the collaboration I was with, with with this other coach, that was sort of breaking apart the strong word. I think we 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 amicably realized we were actually going in different directions. Yeah. And um we we amicably split. But it was around that time I was coming up with the concept of business enjoyment because I'd gone through the whole process of who am I, what do I actually do, what do I actually do for people, and thinking about the, the clients I had the best results with. And realize they weren't coming to me for that. I want a six figure business. I want to make more money kind of thing. It's like, I'm not happy. Yes. <laughs> business is actually okay, but I'm still stressed and I'm still whatever. And what I was doing was, was helping them feel better with what they've currently got, which then tended, tended to lead to better performance, but the better yeah. performance, but the better turnover wasn't the driver. And that's where this concept of enjoyment came from. And then thinking about a bit deeper again, as I allude to in the, in the um, Ted talk, as they're thinking about, well, hang on a sec, you, you, the people that lost everything, you can understand why they're feeling a bit miserable. Um, but then you've got the people that are really successful and they're still miserable and they don't have an excuse <laughs> and people in the middle that are doing okay and they're still stressed and it's like hang on a sec <laughs> and this is where the sort of the kernel of the idea came in terms of um you know business business we're, we're told all the time that business is about making money yeah that's what a business does a business needs to make money and i get that i'm an insulting practitioner practitioner i know how important that is but that's all we focus on yep and there's so much more that's important mm. that goes by the wayside that is sacrificed in order to make money. We stick yes. in a job, sacrificing our mental health to, to earn the money. Uh, we we push ourselves in work, which is and say, well, that's what we should be doing. This is what we ought to do. I'm not enjoying it, but I need to make the money. Um, and even when you're making the money, we're still not happy. <laughs> and and it's this skewed thing that was coming through. It's like this isn't this isn't this isn't right we need to be changing the way we measure success when we focus on money it causes all the problems yeah when it becomes a factor amongst other things then we can start finding balance and again you've seen the talk you know what we're on about yeah so this so the idea is forming here and i'm 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 latching onto maslow's hierarchy of needs as a great little model to refresh me how that works and that fits in with it well and we get these things in place and um so this is all forming all nice and and so this business enjoyment thing is coming together quite nice as a concept people are responding to it um uh, my mission's coming into play in terms of what i want to do on a big level all coming together nicely um and it was sort of around this sort of i was working with a a um it's an international coach um anybody knows their coach rich litvin that wrote the prosperous coach he's a uh, he's based he's english but he's based in america um high-end sort of stuff and um we were working through a lot of things and um around this sort of time I, I say i was clear about where i was going what i was doing but there still wasn't an emotional connection to it logically all makes sense and yes. i'm a very logical person i'm a scientist i'm a mathematician i'm an accountant logically no problem i can do stuff with the brain <laughs> <laughs> But let's remember what what my heart's doing. My heart's spending the last few years blocked behind a wall. <laughs> yes. So that doesn't know how to feel or connect. So we need to do something for me to fully get connected to what I was going to do. Right. And that then became my mission to start changing that side of things. And there was uh, Rich was holding an intensive down in London, and we had. Uh, uh, one evening there was an event which I was all about going deep. Um, I've been on one before, so I sort of knew what to expect. 
Um, and I thought, right, I have one mission in this session, and that is to cry. Because I don't cry. I, I'm right. a bloke. I've got walls of steel. <laughs> <laughs> Crying was not something I was familiar with. Um, yeah. and other than extreme situations at you know funerals of close relatives and that kind of thing, and and one particular film which was interesting. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Silent Running. If you ever seen it, kills me every time. Um, but uh, but no, crying was not something I was familiar with. So I thought if I can break that, then I can get into it. And so I've done a lot of work to improve it. So I was definitely better than I was, but I still wasn't there. And in this session where we got a lot of deep breathing, a lot of movement to get into our bodies rather than out of our heads into body sort of stuff. Um, it was about working with the, the, we were in threes and we had to each come up with where, where were we stuck? Where were we holding back? What was it that was stopping us? And what was the representation that came up? And this, this memory came to the fore, which I had hidden <laughs> forgotten yes uh had always been there but i'm not appreciate it i still don't know i still don't know how but of when i was about i think about four years old yeah. um, christmas uh christmas day and um bottom line is my brother plays a practical joke on me he gives me a stick of chewing gum uh and it's that one of those ones with the spring on it so when you pull yes. the chip, it comes flat you know um uh, yep. back on the thumb i'm a little kid um it hurts. I'm in tears. Dad and brother are laughing because they played a hilarious practical joke on the little kid. Yes. <laughs> Thank brother. Um, and I turn to my mum for, for comfort, as as you would, uh, and she's laughing as well. Right. Yeah. And again, I'm not blaming them. It's, it's, I would, I'd be laughing no. at them in the same situation. It's not the criticism, but it's just as a four year old, seeds start being planted there. What were the mm. seeds that were being planted? Well, um, first of all, don't trust anyone. Mm -hmm. Can't trust yeah. the nearest and dearest. Then you know you can't trust anyone. So I'm not going to start telling people anything. I've got to keep stuff close to my chest anyway. I don't want them to see me being crying and vulnerable in my emotions. So the walls started coming at that point. Yes. Um, I didn't know it. <laughs> that wall that became very useful in its own, so useful in coaching, but was also a hindrance. It started back way back then. Um, and underneath it all was a fear of rejection because I'd just been rejected by all this stuff and not all the well that materialized into interrupting and the problem with the phones and all these kind of things this fear and and me becoming and me becoming a people pleaser so my my mantra has always been yes what can i do how can i help put all my stuff down help other people first but yes. don't but i can't trust anyone so i can't get anybody else to do it and i can't tell anyone i'm having a problem because <laughs> my wall's up there so the work just piles up and you just get worse and worse and worse and internally and i didn't speak to anybody so it just it built everything built up inside without being shared and all the things that had gone on during the during life now started making sense because it all came from that point and in this session and, in this sorry go yeah, just just a quick question then what what did you have to do in the session that made that because what happens as i understand it we've got a, a thing inside our brain called the amygdala mm -hmm. where we store things like you've described and its only job is a warning system to keep you safe right so to, uh, anything that we're af afraid of that might hurt us it will support you and go danger that feeling you had back then, I'm giving it to you now, so you can't call somebody. You mm. know, um, that's as I understand. Yeah, so you got you got the amygdala and you got the hippocampus as well. So the amygdala is the um, emotional center. The hippocampus yeah. is the memory center. Right. And it's it as memories form and memories happen and emotions get attached. It links the two together, and the right. brain is designed not to have to keep re repeating history. So. As, as a similar event arises, the hippocampus flips through its Rolodex of images. Ah, that's that's one I can lay my hands on. That's how I felt last time. That's how I'll feel this time. And it's right. that connection between the two that creates um, a lot of what's going on. Of course, we're very visual uh, creatures anyway. We're, our brains are designed to use images. You must remember that writing is only about 200 years old for the normal person, <laughs> 250 yes. years old. Sort of thing. So we're not designed for writing. Images are our prime thing. Um and again, that thing where you hear about when um, 
uh, people, the life flashing in front of your eyes when a uh, near death experience happens or whatever. That that's the hippocampus looking through. I've not seen something like this before. Well, come on, <laughs> trying to find something close to falling out of a plane or in front of a car or whatever it is. You know, yeah. Um, that's they think that's where that comes from. So, and what 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 did they do in the session to unlock that for you? Absolutely. So what we did was. Um, the, in this particular one, it was, I think it was for the other two. I said my thing and the other two came up with a solution to because uh, we were in, in in a body space and a feeling space. that It was intuitive as to what the right thing to do was. So they made a suggestion, which was essentially I uh, pictured my four year old self who was sad and crying and all the rest of it. And first of all, gave him a ma- picked him up and gave him a massive big hug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a pep talk, essentially. And stuck him on my shoulders and walk, walk, walked ran around the room cheering him and saying look at this guy he's amazing and yes it all seems very silly but you remember all the other people are doing their own thing at the same time so yes. they're all doing stupid ridiculous things at the same time not paying any attention to me and i'm not paying attention then so i'm just wandering around shouting go oh, come on you oh yeah this is the man all this sort of stuff <laughs> Warming him up and making him feel confident and the rest of it and the, the exercise came to uh, to an end. And as this person was wrapping up, my brain was just in this sort of fugue state. And I thought of described it as like the 40 year old wall cracking and f- breaking. And then all yes. this emotion came rushing through me. So, yeah, I started crying. I was just like in floods of tears. Objective achieved, yay. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Through the tears, uh, I have a vision. And I don't mean this in a mystical sense. It's just like a dream state where all the images start coming together. Mm. And in that space, what I envisaged was this sort of hell-like world, an industrial sort of... Um, no offense to Port Talbot, but Port Talbot type sort of thing with like the flaming in, um, yes. factories and all the rest of it. Um, there's this black mass at the front, which I realize is all a low, whole load of people sort of held down by nets and chains, um, yes. slaves, whatever, uh, which is us, <laughs> you know, yeah, this little land of work and everything. And then suddenly this hand sort of like carry sort of bursts out of the out of the, the net and breaks the net and and gets up, stands up tall and proud and sort of looks off to the east to sort of, I don't know, I can't, it's, it was up a hill towards sort of paradise sort of way. Um, and I'm assuming this was me, by the way. It's my, <laughs> of course. Guessing, you know, why wouldn't yeah. you? Um, so that's it. I'm out. I'm free. I'm heading off to where I'm going to go. But before I do anything, I stop. I turn around, reach in and grab the next person and pull them out. Right. And then together we start leading. Oh, what a wonderful massive, metaphor. Yeah. To paradise. Yeah. And and that just set me off again. I can still feel it now. I'm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this, so the, nothing changed in terms of what I sort of intended to do in terms of direction but this was the emotional connection starting to work and yes. start, and breaking that wall down and actually fitting in to i'd already created the chalice if you like and this was the liquid rushing into it into what had already been prepared of the work i'd done before yeah and now i was sort of connected to a sense of purpose a sense of meaning a sense of direction um now the the I will explain briefly this bit because if you've watched my look at my LinkedIn profile and sort of the current book and that kind of thing. Um, so the way I described it was so beforehand I said I was very logical. Every, everything was very heady. That's right. And yes. that's still my natural instinct is to think with a head. I have to kind of remember to think with a heart. Yes. Uh, we can think with our hearts, we can think with our gut. gut. We talk about the gut feel, heart feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the idea is to get them all sort of kind of aligned when you're in purpose, you're sort of, everything's all in the same place, going the same direction. So yes, my, um, interpret- interpretation of these two things are the brain, the tummy and the soul. Yes. Brain, tummy, soul, B, T, S, they're your bits. <laughs> and when everything comes aligned, when you head in the right direction, when it, when you you you're getting that lightning bolt as everything comes together, that's when your bits tingle. 
Right. <laughs> and that's where my strap line kind of came from. I want you to enjoy your business so much it makes your bits tingle. <laughs> oh, we got there. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's yeah. not gone you know no, ask the next question yeah yeah i it's incredible isn't it because i mean we started this conversation about i've had a fairly ordinary upbringing and you know i kind of done what the book says to do i've gone into all of these and then you've come on this massive journey and career and then things started to wobble a little bit but what happened you know everything conspired around you to push you in a certain direction that you embraced but hadn't fully embraced because your heart hadn't fully gone with it yet and then something else happens and you get drawn in to go in a certain direction and go to people who are going to help you unlock the heart side of you as well. And then you're able to then create this massive metaphor around it, which then allows you to build a whole business around it. <laughs> and I think that is just incredible, you know, from this kind of ordinary upbringing to being able to create something like that from within is mm. yeah i love and, it and that's why it was important to say i had an ordinary background because mm. as i say you you see the inspirational speakers on stage and usually not always but in the main their purpose is very much connected to the, the serious thing that they issue they had they uh, yes. they've had cancer and now they're on a mission to, to cure cancer they, they've had drug addiction yes. now they're on a mission to cure drugs it's very root one very obvious but you have to go through that trauma serious trauma in order to discover it yeah and, uh i mean just as an, this sense of purpose which is the I, 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 is at the top end of the model of connects with self-actualization from Maslow. Um, interesting, when I went back and look at that first book that I wrote with Insolvency, uh, I had mm. realized it actually had been writ large in there, that these people who'd been through everything and found their way back up again, it was actually about them finding their sense of purpose and, and re realizing what was really important in their life because they'd lost all that stuff and realized it wasn't about the money and the suits and all the rest of it. And I'd written that, but it hadn't actually hit home in my own head. <laughs> yes. Until much later on when I look back at it. Um, but anyway, so using that as an example, as a business, as an example, but it applies to any of those, you know, the, the drug, addict, drug addict, the person that's suffered abuse or whatever it is. And again, this is not to demean any of them. I mean, this is amazing what you have, they, these people do. Um, but but I'll use the business sense because it's a bit more understanding. So um, someone's going into business um it's their new business and it's like they're going to read all the books watch all the the, the stuff and learn how to do and then what they're going to hear is you need to fail in order to succeed oh, i know here's all these businessmen that are there. oh he's he's failed here and he's failed there oh do you know how many times richard branson's gone bust oh it, answer is never but that's a different matter that's not what you'll hear um <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes it's got close but the um but this you have to fail in order to succeed so in theory and i exaggerate for the sake of comic effect but it's a, a, a you know it's a true point in theory, they, their business plan for their new business should say, okay, right, okay, so what I'll do is I'll start with my ideal client and I'll start building some sales. And, and then here in about year three, what I'll do is I go bust and yeah. then I'll have a traumatic fit phase. Then I'll learn what I really need to learn and I'll start again. Yeah. That there should be the business plan of every, everybody sets out starting it. Now, it's kind of obvious that that's not a good idea. No. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> Part of my mission is because because the the purpose is one of the keystones of business enjoyment. Um, uh, what I'm working on is using the the stuff to sort of get rid of all the stuff that holds us back, that drags us down, the the pain points, the 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 reason why we can't pick the phone up. You know, get rid of all the stuff that's that's causing the pain stuff, but then bring the towards thing, the the purpose. And when we're 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 in line with that, when we're focusing on the thing, we're into flow better, we're enjoying life better. The enjoyment becomes a consequence because we're heading towards what we want to head towards. How do does one find that purpose without having to go through the massive trauma? Yeah. How does find some, some, you know, because you see it so often that people go along life and then 
life says you, you're working too hard so i'm going to give you a stroke i'm going to give you a heart attack i'm going to give you a, t- t- hopefully you'll pay attention and listen they don't always listen but <laughs> yes <laughs> how do we do it without having life coming in and taking a, 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 our feet away from us and the truth of the matter is there is still trauma in it even though i had a boring life and i that's how i used it deliberately because that's the point um there was still that four-year-old who experienced trauma even though as an adult it's not traumatic no <laughs> Oh, your brother played a joke on you. Who who didn't? Yeah, okay. But relatively speaking, for that kid in that time, in that moment, in that pressure cooker, it had a profound effect. So it was still a case of going back and picking out the trauma from there. Yeah. But it's not what we would call traumatic. No. Um, and so um, a lot of what I'm doing now is working with people and some of these people uh, that are, are, are being the su- successful and and but still not happy type sort of things. It's like, let's let's work out what your purpose actually is. Right. Can we use those skills and resources and steer it to something that's really going to make a difference, which might mean some painful stuff. We might need to go back and revisit things that you didn't even know was there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and unpick some of this stuff and get you parading your five year old around on your shoulders going, look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> whatever the equipment might be in order to 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 realign and get things shifted because if you can if you can get those people at the at the top going out and making a difference in the world with all the knowledge and the resources that they've got that to create the businesses they're going to make a huge amount of difference difference yeah. in the world beyond sort of thing so uh amongst everything else you know yeah so <laughs> okay so brilliant thank you there's so much stuff in there and so your your business is called Andrew Business Enjoyment. Business Enjoyment. Why not? And you have a podcast too, correct? Called the Tingle Zone. What well, makes your bits tingle? <laughs> so you interview business owners. Yep, and um, and you know it well because you've been on. <laughs> Hasn't released yet, but you've been interviewed. Um, but it's to understand similar, similar sort of thing, but it's understand the journeys that people have been through. If yes. they are, have had traumatic stories, great. And if they've not had traumatic stories, as I've just, we've, we've touched on here, everybody has a story. Everybody has something yes. that's important to them. And ultimately, you know, nobody's born with all the knowledge. We learn the knowledge and, you know, people who, who are doing well in business, their journey and their mission and their learnings are all connected together. So the learnings of business come out of the story and we also get to understand the motivation. So the idea of the podcast is understanding those journeys to to, to get business knowledge, but, but we know where the context comes from. So we know this person's lived it and breathed it. It's not just something they've read in a book and spouting it forth. Yeah. Um, and final question of the show is always what makes your bits tingle? Um, yeah. So what's that passion, that drive that gets you out of bed? Uh, and yeah. again, so the idea is for listeners, it's like I'm getting business skills, but I'm also getting motivational skills as well. That's the that's the idea behind it. OK, perfect. Perfect. And if so, I suppose, what does the day job look like today for you? Uh, you know, how many people do you speak to a day? Do you call anybody still? Uh, <laughs> My natural instinct is still avoid calling, but I can. I can call people that aren't expecting me. I'm much better at it. <laughs> Good man. Good man. Um, so it's 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 always a rolling beast. So um yes. there's a number of clients that I'm working with anyway that are in place of various sorts. So mm. those, those calls and things are happening. Um I run a number of um I'll call them discussion groups. They're like peer-to-peer sort of mastermind group slash yes. group coaching slash AA meeting for directors. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and it's it's not like any of the other peer-to-peer groups around. It doesn't use any of the, the, the format. We we use the the the, the model, the business enjoyment model, um, uh, feeling safe, find your tribe, inner confidence, find your purpose, money hang-ups, always got some issues around money, and enjoy your business. They're the six stages. Um, with a small group online it's all online um sort of yeah i think we're a maximum of 10 people in each group i think so you're normally about seven or eight who are actually there each month um each month there's we move on from one thing to another so this month we've just had is enjoy your business next month they'll be feeling safe within that context i'll throw a question in yeah it's appropriate relevant everybody's got their own stuff going on and we get conversation going 
and I'll facilitate that conversation. And as we go through it, people reveal open. It's a very secure space. People open up what's going for them. Other people come up with other other suggestions, different perspectives, different point of views. And by the end of it, most people come away feeling they've unshared some burdens. They've learned stuff. They've got built trust with other people and they've got support group around them as we run yeah. different things. So those breathing spaces run sporadically around the month. Um, and I'm building various courses and programs and things behind the scenes as well and getting the, the, the um, what's the word, the technical stuff sorted as well. Um, what I'm starting to do now is I've done my first one in May, be another one back into September, I think. Um, I'm doing a, a Your Purpose Challenge. So a five-day event. Um, at the moment, they're free. Um, come in. Each day, I'll um, give some... Uh, a, a, to help people go through the journey I went through, to get them thinking about why purpose is important, why they've got stuck into certain patterns, what they can do to get out of those patterns, what they can do to start finding purpose and looking deep within themselves in order to look larger and beyond. And over that course, over those five days, it's it's interactive. People are getting involved, starting to think deep and get them get them on started on their journey of yes finding purpose. Um, so there's a lot of work going behind the scenes to get that sort of uh, right as well. So everything is pointing in the same direction, isn't it? There's no, you're very, very clear that it all comes back to that same point mm. of and, purpose and, it, and enjoyment. Yeah, and then because it's, it's that model. I mean, the 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 eventual aim is so. It was a, we talked about my, mentioned my personal mission, which is to change the way that success is measured um business enjoyment itself um what i want to create from that is a um a, a corporate community uh, in the metaverse <laughs> right um and essentially it's going to be a learning and development place i want people to have access to everything they need in both business development and personal development yes in order to be successful but enjoy the journey at the same time right and the vision is I mean, I, I started thinking about this before I'd heard the word meta. I didn't. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, I played some computer games, and I, you get immersed in this three D world of a computer game, and then you go on a website, and it's just flat screen with just some writing on, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. Just, well, and I thought, well, hang on, why can't we create that sort of computer game thing? And I envisioned a sort of Disney World sort of space. So you, you, you come in, and you've got the. Um, uh, the the welcome board with the map, and obviously you'd log in there, and it's your level of yes. membership, whatever. And then over on your left, you've got the bookstore, and then you've got the video store, and then you've got the theatre. Um, so you've got all the books that you need, you've got all the videos, and you've got all the presentations going on. There's a first aid centre over here for anybody that needs emergent help. There's a cafe where you can do networking, and I'm thinking of networking where you actually, ideally, you want the VR goggle type things, but you can do it on a computer without them. But you can actually see the people, the avatars are moving around. Yes. And like you would in a real networking event, you see two people talking, it's an open pair. I'll go in and just tap on the shoulder and their information will come up and they will invite you into the conversation and you're talking with those three and finding out about them and all the rest of it. Then, But you're okay to move off and go somewhere else, as opposed to the Zoom meetings where it's only one conversation between That's 100 right. people. Yeah. Um, and they can have alleys sort of spinning off and then and with, with different shops going along each one. And... Um, because I've got the six different models, I probably have six different lands with a different tone and, and thing of each one going on. Uh, and all the stuff behind it will obviously be other people with producing it. I'm not creating all this. <laughs> it's just creating the platform. It was some of my stuff. Um, well, yeah, well yeah. That's what I, want to I mean, the thing is, of course, we know that people are going to be creating these kind of things and sure. you just, you know, adapt it. Absolutely. But we, before we got started in this interview, we had a really quick chat about social audio and LinkedIn audio and everything. And of course, there's Clubhouse who started the revolution of social audio and they are beta testing right now, something called houses. And it's exactly that concept, but with audio only. <laughs> so you have a house with many rooms in it and oh, yeah. you can literally go once you're invited into the house and you're allowed in into that house by the owner of the house you can just go into this room where they're talking about this topic you can then move into another room you go down the you know the hallway to all these rooms that you might need um so there's it's a 
it's a concept that is going to be available very soon. And you can practice there. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I've, and I've seen some people doing networking events with like a 2D version where you can go into the different areas. And you, the tables are mapped out and you can walk to the table and that sort of thing. Um, now, just to just to finish off the, the connection behind the scenes, you know, people come in, and go, it's going to be a membership thing. It's not going to be expensive, but it's going to be levels of membership. So yes. it, you can come in for free <laughs> uh, and you can and you can go to the bookshop and, and and press your face against the bookstore and look look through the window, maybe get a flyer at the front. But, you know, free gets you access to so much. There'll be a startup membership. There'll be a sort of established business. There'll be supreme level, whatever it is. So different levels of, of depending where you are on your journey. But mm -hmm. not expensive, but just enough. And the point is, when you're a member, you have to provide certain information. And this is all to work be worked on, by the way. I don't actually have the answers to this, but that's okay. Who needs answers now? That's what the future's for. I can uh, see it. I can see it. It's there. You know, you you may have been in businesses and um, like a an accountant's as an example, but they will have a television screen up with a FTSE index on. That's right. And I want one of those in the rafters of the of the ceiling, which is all well, the information that's going to be put in by the business owners as they're doing it. And we're going to track different metrics. Right. Not just how well they're doing; it's going to be how 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 what the difference they're making in the in the, in the world. In, how take into consideration the environment, um, how their team are, uh, are feeling within the, these sort of things are going to get fed in, mm. and we're going to create our own FTSE index based on a metric which is not just about how much money we make. Brilliant, uh, brilliant. I was I was um, listening to a podcast just briefly to mention by Humane Tech. I forget what the podcast name is, but there were two couple of ladies there talking. You know, you've heard of the term unicorns, mm -hmm. which is this $1 billion tech company. You know, they're called unicorns when they're valued at $1 billion. Uh. But the concept they talked about was zebras or zebras in English. Um, <laughs> The Dutch guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says a Dutch guy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, did you know what a collection of zebras is called? I have heard it. I'm desperately trying to remember it, but far away. The, a dazzle. Okay, nice. <laughs> it's to confuse the lions when they all get together. See all these stripes and the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, they can't, can't choose which one they're going to go for they get blurred yeah yeah they get blurred so it's a dazzle i when they mentioned this and they mentioned the lion all i remembered was you're probably too young maybe you're not was a program called ductari with clarence the oh, lion who was cross-eyed that was the cross-eyed lion yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so i had this vision of this lion cross-eyed um so um but zebras are not unicorns. So they're ordinary companies who are also trying to make it, you know, but they need some help and support to to get bigger or, you know, get to whatever they want to be achieving. But they're not these like unicorns that are billion dollar companies where all these. Um... I mean, of course, the, 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 the metaphor breaks down a little bit on the basis that zebras exist. Um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, not for me to. Uh... <laughs> um, so um, yeah, and that's the vision. Yeah, brilliant. I love it. I love the vision. I I really want to keep track of how that's going. And is there anything that I haven't asked that I should have asked that you would like to have shared? <sighs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered quite a bit. I think we we did main main nuggets. Um, well, we want to say to people definitely watch Andrew's yeah. TED talk. Which I mean, is what, I'll, what I'll say brilliant. is if, 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 to access that. I mean, I've, I've got it in a few places, but if you go to my website, don't worry, yeah. you go to uh, businessenjoyment.com, uh, they'll pop up up here and you just click on a button and it will, and it will take you to the TED talk. Um, en route, it does give you an option to get a download of my book which sort of accompanies the talk and which you, you do have a copy of um more than just money uh you, you don't have to you can go straight to the ted talk and come back to it if you want it's up to you but it what it does is it sort of 
expands on that talk a little bit further. It goes into the business enjoyment model a little bit more um, and and how you can use it, how you can use that model to, to solve pretty much or find solutions to pretty much any problem that's, that's coming up in business or in life. Um, so that, that'll be free. That does mean I have their email address. Oh, my God. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm not a spammer. It's just a case, look, this is what's going on. And I, yes. I get some extra free resources. I do have the breathing spaces. You can find out more about that if that's of interest. I mean, the, 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 the basic membership is 20 quid a month. I mean, the amount of value people get for that is just ridiculous. I should be charging hundreds of pounds for doing it. But I, I I'm, remember, I, I, I started with and I still do work with people who've lost everything. And I always want them to be included in whatever I do. So um yes i've got high ticket programs for the people that can afford it but i want access for everybody to everything i do in some yeah. way yeah. um so yeah okay any other places people can connect with you andrew uh linkedin is a good one I'm, I'm i'm i am on other social medias i do have a youtube channel but to be honest linkedin is probably my most active thing i'm starting to do um some linkedin lives as well interviews with people um some of them that have been on the podcast and they catch up and that kind of thing others uh other people as well um but just just yeah linkedin is the best place to see what's what's going on and um connect with me but if you're uh if you want to get in touch and know a bit more then um just mention that you were on uh you heard me on the on michael's show so that i know uh <laughs> 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 thank accordingly but uh uh it's all about i'm not um People always get worried about getting in touch with people and all that sort of thing because it's like I'm going to sell to you. I, I I'm very much a believer in relationships and collaboration. Yes. And yes. if I've got someone in front of me, I do not want to work with them in any way, shape, or form unless they want to. And if they don't yeah. want to and they're not in the right place, that's absolutely fine. I want you to be in the right space, get where you need to do, do what you need to do. And if that's working with someone else or whatever it might be, absolutely fine. So I'm I'm not here to go, whoa ha ha, ham come and work for me. In fact, I, I don't do many one to one clients anyway anymore. No. Uh, but um but there's there's loads of stuff that's available i've got seven books if they want to have a look at some of them you know there's there's plenty of stuff going on it's <laughs> listen to the podcast um get my free business cheat sheet it, 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 there's loads of stuff for everybody fantastic fantastic yeah go and check it out i think it's a really worthwhile discussion and thank you so much for sharing your story i've really enjoyed listening and learning how it all got started proper <laughs> so <laughs> in depth yes thank well, you for being you know so authentic and honest and open about it all um yeah it's refreshing thank you thank you for having me on and giving me the space to to give the full story because it's uh i i, I there's little that i can I, I can do it little bits of it in chunks and sort of keep it together but i think some of the nuances are quite nice to hear over a, yes. over a decent length of time and um I deliberately sort of thinking about why how I was there where I am now how it's all connected and we're that's about us as humans we aren't just a thing in space at any moment in time we're this complex creature over a period of time and what happened to us when we were young impacts what we're doing now and everything in between and we're yeah. all connected to the future too and all this sort of stuff but um yeah thank you for the space thank you Andrew hopefully we will meet in person one day um, that, <laughs> that, would, that would be really good um, but I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Wishing you so much success for with everything. Uh, and I know it will be really successful anyway. So take care, all the best, and hope to catch with you, catch up with you really soon again. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Michael. Bye for now. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.